week eight of the fantasy football season. And here's a few plays I look to buy and trade for this week. The first guy, Tony Pollard of the Dallas Cowboys. So the Cowboys coming off the bye week. And Tony Pollard, I know he was the first, second rounder in most fantasy leagues, but he really hasn't done much over the last month of the season. In terms of putting up big numbers and making big plays, I know week six, he did have a decent game, 17 fantasy points, but pretty much on a broken play, he had a 60 plus yard reception to Tony Pollard on the season, made a little pack type of running back, like I mentioned early in the year, he was getting it going, but the numbers went down from week one to week five every week, his points went down and then week six, the decent game at the Chargers would save them. But right now, coming off a bye week, and this Cowboy team now, they definitely have tougher matchups, and I think they got to rely on the run a little bit more and find better ways to get Tony Powell with the football. So right now, coming off a bye week, struggling over the last few weeks besides that one big play at the Los Angeles Chargers, I think this is a perfect time to go out there and buy Tony Powell because I think he's a good running back to help fantasy owners. We saw last season he was making plays, catching the ball out of the backfield. He's got that breakaway speed. And right now, I think this Cowboy team can lean on him a little bit more with tougher matchups coming on. So this is a week to buy him because if he has that one big pop game as Tony Pollard, the value is going to go up and you're going to have to give up more to get him. The next back's another back coming off a bye, Joe Mixon of the Cincinnati Bengals. So Joe Mixon, I definitely wasn't big on him coming into the season, but in terms of a player that's going to get a full workload and get a lot of volume, that's why Joe Mixon is a decent buy. You could plug him in as a number two running back and not have to worry about workload or if someone's going to take his job or whatever the case may be. So I know Mixon this season, his ceiling's been 14 fantasy points, and he hovers around that 10 to 14 fantasy point number every week so far this year. So right now, tough matchup, no doubt about it, it's San Francisco. Mixon owners, they're definitely frustrated that he really hasn't done much this season. But like I said, he's a solid number two running back for fantasy owners. And if you need help at the running back position, I think a decent number two wide receiver you could give up in a deal because wide receiver is easier to find than a decent running back for fantasy owners. So right now, Joe Mixon not playing great football. But after the bye week, I think the Cincinnati Bengals team is going to go out there and start to take off. They struggled, obviously, early in the season. Joe Burrow not 100% with the calf injury. But I think they're going to find ways as well to get Mixon the football in space and make some plays and help this run game and help this offense. So right now, while Mixon's had it down the end, no doubt about it this season. He's a perfect buy low player this week. The next guy is B. John Robinson of the Atlanta Falcons. A very puzzle when that Robinson, he tried to play through an illness and he didn't really see the field at all. He was only on the field for about 10, 12 snaps and he only had one carry for three yards in that week seven win at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So B. John Robinson, we know he's a great talent. But the last three weeks, he's pretty much hasn't done much for fantasy owners. Week five versus Houston, I know he had 11.80 fantasy points, but a late touchdown reception, a nice one hand to grab, saved his day in that one. And then week six versus the Commanders, he didn't really do much as well in that one. He ran for under three yards per carry in that game was B. John Robinson, and the reception saved them in that one. So he's one of the better catchers out of the backfield for this team. I know he's got a tough matchup with Tennessee that gives up the ninth least amount of fantasy points to running backs on the season. But right here, B. John Robinson, he's an explosive running back. And I know he's going to have that huge 30, 35 point breakout game sooner than later. So right now, after the last three weeks, he really hasn't done much for fantasy owners in terms of putting up huge numbers where you drafted him in the first round, mid first round, late first round, most leagues. This is a perfect time to buy him low because once B. John gets his legs on the room, and he just gets more comfortable of the NFL way. Because we're only in week eight here. This guy could take off and be a league winner for fantasy owners. I believe this season, next next play is Josh Jacobs, another running back of the Vegas Raiders. So definitely the holdout didn't help Jacobs at all in terms of putting up numbers. But Josh Jacobs, he had a couple pop games this season. But the last two weeks, the numbers have definitely been pedestrian. Obviously with Jimmy Garoppolo not in the lineup. And going with backups, Brian Hoyer at Aiden O'Donnell. He's definitely going to hurt his value, and he's got a tough matchup on Monday Night Football at the Lions. I give up the least amount of fantasy points to running backs on the season, but Josh Jacobs, we know he's playing for a contract. He's on the one-year franchise tag. There's also people thinking he could just mail it in towards the end of the season and not really play, but right now, Josh Jacobs, he's a talented running back. He's a guy that goes out there and makes plays, and he's been even better out of the backfield this season in terms of catching the football with 26 catches this season. Well, last season he had 53, so they're going to lean on him a little bit more. This Raider team, it was a bad loss at a bad team playing pretty much with backups 
in that offense. But anyway, Josh Jacobs, after coming off of two games where he really hasn't done much, he's a perfect buy low player this week. The next buy low is his teammate, Devontae Adams of the Vegas Raiders. So Devontae Adams, he's obviously frustrated with this Raider team, not getting the football. And the last three weeks, he really hasn't done much as well. He maxed out at 12.70 fantasy points. A week five versus Green Bay, four catches, 45 yards. Week six versus New England, two catches, 29 yards. And then week seven in Chicago, like I said, only seven catches, 57 yards. So right now, Devontae Adams frustrated. This Raider team playing with a backup quarterback now with Garoppolo out. And even with Garoppolo in there, he had the one huge game in week three versus Pittsburgh where he had over 40 fantasy points in PPR leagues. But anyway, he's struggling items. He's not 100% as well. And he's a perfect buy well guy. I don't think you've got to give up much to get Adams right now because Owen is obviously frustrated where the last month of the season, his best game was 15 and a half fantasy points. So right now, while he's struggling and not putting up the numbers, but we just know Devontae Adams. He's always that wide receiver where you count him out. He comes back with a vengeance and puts up big numbers. So he's a perfect buy low play this week. The next guy's Amari Cooper of the Cleveland Browns. So Amari Cooper, he's been a pretty decent wide receiver this season. But there's games just throughout his career where he has a monster game and then games he disappears. And the last two out of three weeks, he's pretty much been non-existent. And it's tough as well without the Sean Watson in there playing with a TJ Walker. And Adair Thompson, who started one of the ball games as well earlier in the season. So the last few games here for Cooper, week four, Versus Baltimore, only one catch, 16 yards. Week six, versus the nine is four catches, 108 yards. And week seven at the Colts, only two catches, 22 yards. So right now, the last two out of three games, like I can mention non-existent is Amari Cooper. I still believe he's one of the best route runners in the game. And he does have a good matchup with the Seattle Seahawks that give up top five fantasy points to wide receivers on the season. So right now, while Cooper hasn't done much over the last few weeks, he's a buy low candidate as well. Hopefully, Deshaun Watson could get back on the field I know he took a big hit in week seven at the Indianapolis Colts, but if he could get back on the field, then Corey Cooper, he's a wide receiver that the ball just has to be in the area. And Watson's a quarterback that could throw a wide receiver open, which P.J. Walker really isn't. So right now, while he hasn't done much, he's a buy low play this week. And the, and the final play I look to buy and trade for is Tyler Lockett of the Seattle Seahawks. So Tyler Lockett, so far this season, it's definitely been a struggle for Lockett. Only two games with double-digit fantasy points in the first six of the season. So Lockett, we know when it's all said and done at the end of the year, he's a thousand yard wide receiver. But this season, it's been tough for Lockett. Him and Geno really haven't been on the same page. But Ty will lock it out of nowhere sometimes. He just has that huge game where he explodes for a big one. So right now, Lockett's struggling for sure this season here for the Seattle Seahawks team. But he's a player that it takes only two or three games for him to turn it around and be top 15, top 20 in fantasy points when the season's over. So right now, while Lockett really hasn't done much so far this season, he's a perfect buy low guy because, like I said, he's still a speedy wide receiver. He's still one of the better route runners in the league. And him and Geno, they just got to get on the same page. They're just missing on a few plays. So right now, Tyler Lockett's a player to buy low this week. So that's a few plays I look to buy and trade for for week eight of the fantasy football season.